What's up everybody? I've got the Waterdrop G2 P600 reverse osmosis filter here. And in this video, I'm gonna unbox, install, and talk about the features and benefits of this system. Some of you may be wondering, do I need a full-fledged reverse osmosis water filter for my house? Or is a Brita or a refrigerator filter sufficient? While I can't answer that question for you, I can say that reverse osmosis water is the gold standard in water filtration, and it's the only water that I will use for drinking and cooking in my house. As of the filming of this video in early 2021, I'm aware of several companies that manufacture a similar style of tankless reverse osmosis water filter. But Waterdrop, just based on my research, appears to be the dominant player in that market. For those of you that have used reverse osmosis water systems in the past, there are three advantages to this type of tankless design that you need to be aware of. The first is because there's no tank, the footprint is significantly smaller and the amount of space you need under your kitchen sink or behind your refrigerator is a lot less. The caveat here is it makes up for the tank with an electric motor and you need a power outlet near the unit for it to function correctly. The second advantage is that the device only uses two different filters. While most reverse osmosis systems have either five or seven individual filters, Waterdrop has combined multiple filter stages into individual filters. So this unit, the G2, uh, has five stages that are combined into two filters, and its slightly bigger brother, the, the G3 offered by Waterdrop, has three different filters and seven stages among those three. And the third major difference between this newer style of reverse osmosis system and the older one is the ease of filter replacement and maintenance. So I have come to dread replacing filters on my old reverse osmosis system because when you unscrew the canister to replace the filter, it's almost inevitable that water is gonna pour all over the kitchen floor and have to use towels to mop it up and it takes an hour or two. Uh, with this system, the filters screw out and back in, it takes about 10 seconds, water doesn't pour everywhere, you don't have to unplug anything. Also, another consideration is filter cost and frequency of replacement. So most systems have a six month interval. This one, you only have to replace filters every 12 months and the average cost per year is about $55. Okay, let's jump into the unboxing. So we have the unit itself, and then we also have the faucet and accessory kit, the instruction manual, this looks like the faucet assembly, there's a sticker here for if you need to drill a hole in your sink, and in this bag we have hoses and other connection components. And this is the unit itself. It's time to complete the install. I've brought everything downstairs with me and I'll go step by step through the entire process. If you're on the fence about doing the install yourself or hiring a plumber, the next few minutes will give you a clear understanding about each step in the process and will help you make an informed decision. Installation is a two-step process. First, connections need to be made at the back of the unit and the device needs to be plugged in. Second, a faucet needs to be installed to bring the clean water from the device up above the sink. Let's talk about the connections at the back of the unit. The large feed port in the center brings municipal water into the system. The smaller red port removes wastewater and sends it down the drain. Lastly, the port on the right takes purified water and brings it up to the faucet. All right, now I'm gonna get under the sink and make each of those connections. Before beginning any work, shut off the cold water supply. Next, I'm gonna connect the feed water adapter, which will bring municipal water into the filter. Notice how the tubing comes pre-attached with a splitter. Here I'm loosening the connection, which brings cold water into the faucet above the sink using an adjustable wrench. If you're unsure which connection is cold versus hot, first look for labels on the shutoff valves themselves. If that doesn't work, you can test by shutting one off, running water in the sink, and feeling the temperature of the output water with your hand. Also, it's important to double check that the valve is in the off position. If it's open, you run the risk of water spraying everywhere. 
Before attaching the splitter, I'm wrapping the threads with Teflon tape to prevent small leaks. You don't need to purchase this, it comes in the box with the filter. Screw the feed water adapter into place and tighten with a wrench. The white tube that exits the splitter at a 90 degree angle brings tap water to the filter. After applying Teflon tape to the threads above the adapter, I reattach the line that takes tap water up to the main faucet above the sink. With the feed water adapter connected to the house, I move on to what is arguably the most tricky step in the install, connecting a drain line. This contraption is a drain saddle. It attaches to the existing drain pipe under your sink. A quarter inch hole must be drilled in a vertical section of the pipe. It's critical that the drain saddle be connected before the P-trap so that sewer gas does not escape into your home. When drilling, you also need to be very careful not to penetrate the opposite side of the drain pipe. Use a quarter inch bit and go slow. Now the saddle can be connected. Spin the nuts down loosely, then grab the red quarter inch drain tube. The blue locking clip needs to be removed before the tube can be inserted. Next, insert the drain tube into the port on the drain saddle. Line up the tube with the pre-drilled hole and push in until the black line disappears. The manual suggests inserting six tenths of an inch past the black line. It doesn't have to be perfect, but there is a sweet spot. Push the red tube too far and it'll press against the far side of the drain pipe, blocking the flow of water. If you don't insert far enough, you may experience a leak. Once the tube is properly situated, reinsert the locking clip and tighten down the drain saddle. Grab the water drop filter. It's time to connect tubing to the device. I start with the intake water. The white tube is coming from the previously installed feed water splitter. As before, push the tube down to the black line and install a blue locking clip. Do the same for the red drain water tube. Then install the third and final tube a smaller white tube that takes filtered water out of the machine and up to the RO faucet. At this stage, it's okay to cut tubing shorter to create a cleaner install. Just use a sharp knife and make a clean cut. If you move to a new home and need longer tubing again, tubes are replaceable with quarter or three eighths inch outer diameter tube that you could buy at any hardware store. Next, we install the RO faucet. You will need a one and three eighths inch hole in your sink. This is a standard size, and it's likely that your sink already has one to five of them. If needed, you can drill a hole using the provided sticker for guidance. Although this may pose a challenge if your sink is made of a hard material, in which case you'll need a diamond tipped drill bit, or particularly delicate, like porcelain, which is prone to cracking. Holes can be created in even the toughest materials if you're so inclined. Drop the faucet body into the hole and insert the spout by pushing down. Grab the included mounting hardware and get under the sink. Tighten the white nut down on the black washer to hold the faucet body in place. Connect the quick connect fitting to the bottom of the faucet stem and secure with a blue locking clip. Finally, insert the white filtered water tube coming from the water drop unit and secure with a locking clip. The faucet is now installed. Lastly, I'm moving the device to its permanent home under the sink and plugging it in. I have a garbage disposal plugged into a switched outlet on the bottom, and I'm plugging my dishwasher and water drop filter into the top outlet, which is always on. And that's it for the install. If you stuck with me, I hope you enjoyed it. You can see it took me a couple of hours and it has gotten dark outside. 
Um, the last thing to do, the owner's manual says to turn on the water and let the filter run for 30 minutes straight to allow the filters to flush themselves fully before drinking any of the water. So I'm gonna jump in and do that now. So I ran the unit for 30 minutes. Uh, there's an LED on the front that stops blinking when you hit the 30 minute mark. Uh, so I'm good there. One last thing before I go, I have a TDS tester here and I'm just gonna test the total dissolved solid content of both the municipal tap water and the filter water. So let's jump in and do that. Here are the results. I live in Arizona and our water is extremely hard. 678 parts per million. Maybe my next video will be on a whole home water softener. Who knows? The water drop system performs as advertised, removing 95% of dissolved solids from the water. Since there's no easy way to test for contaminants such as lead, fluoride, or arsenic, I'm going to take water drop at their word that they remove other impurities. One final suggestion before I go. If the filter has been sitting for a significant period of time, I suggest running it for 15 to 30 seconds to flush the filters. This is because I noticed that after sitting overnight, the TDS levels will spike when the filter is first turned on, and then drop down to a low level. I think this is a side effect of the system's high level of efficiency, and I also noticed researching that other RO systems continuously flush themselves, thereby wasting a ton of water. Thank you for watching.